So in this video, I'll show you how to combine Vuforia AR and a FBX animation to either on a key press animate something or on a screen press on a mobile device. So I've already set up the basic things here with the AR camera and image target. So we have our basic setup for Vuforia AR. The FBX is also imported. Right now it's just the same lazy target that we've used before and a 3D model of the hard drive as well. The difference is this one now has an animation so it opens up and it closes back down. So we'll need to set up the animation for this specific uh, hard drive here. So what I'll do is I'll drag it into my scene onto my image target. I'll of course scale it down and move it into place. So now we need to set up the animator for this game object here. If we look into the FBX file, if there is an animation on it already, there should be some clips or some takes already there. So however, this one right now just has one long animation of the hard drive opening and closing. And I would like to have a variance that I can both click once to open, click once to close. So what I can do is I can select the FBX file here, which will also show me model, rig, animation, and so on and so forth. So under animation here specifically, I can take the complete animation clip and I can separate that into individual sub takes. So I'll call this one open. And now I can actually clamp the range. So I know for a fact that the animation starts from around frame 10 and it ends at around 45. So now my animation opens. And that's basically what I need from this first animation. Then I'll click the plus sign up here. It'll create a new take 001. I'll call this close. Again, I'll clamp the range. And I know that this one goes from about frame 49 and then all the way to the end. So now I have a closing animation. So if I look into the FBX file here again at the bottom, I still see the take 001. This is because you always need to scroll all the way down here and click apply to the changes that you've made to the specific FBX file. So apply. Now you can see that I both have my open and close animations as two different clips down here. So what I can do now is I can drag them into the lazy anim game object here. And if I go into the animator, I can now actually see that I have my open and I have my close animations. So the only thing that I need now is one that it's called none that it can default to. So I can right click, create state, empty, select it, go into the inspector over here and write none. Hit enter. Now I can right click it and choose that this is my default state. This is now my basic setup for the animation that I want to do in my like AR app. Now I just need to be able to trigger these different animations. I'll now click my game object that I want to animate and I want to add a component because I want to add a script. So in this case, I'll call it AnimHDD and I'll create a new script, language C sharp, create and add. Now I can double click it and it should load in the editor of choice, in this case, Visual Studio. So every time I set something up for a mobile device, I make sure that I also have something that works on my PC so that I can actually test it with a both keyboard control, but also with a touchscreen. So the first thing we need to do is we need to set up a variable. So in this case, we'll say public. In this case, it's a animator. And we'll just call this anim. The next thing that we want to set up here in our update is a if statement to look for which animation is currently playing and if a button has been pressed. So what we will write is if start parentheses input dot get key down and we will look for a specific key. In this case, we will look for, let's just say number one on our keyboard. And another thing is anim dot get current animator state info. So which layer are we currently on? In this case, we want to look for the state zero and we want to look for a specific name of an animation. So is name and the name that we'll be looking for in this case. So the first like start here will be the none animation that we'll be looking for. So what should it do if it actually, if both of these are correct? Well, it should anim.play. In this case, we want it to play our open animation. So what we'll do now is we'll take the if statement that we just created, we'll copy it and we'll add two more instances of this. The difference is we'll call them else if. So the difference with these are, so if the state is then set to close, we will play the open animation. If the state is set to open, we'll set it to play the close animation. So open, open, close. Let's save this. Let's go back into the Unity editor and let's try to activate the play mode. So you can see it tracks. If I hit the one on my keyboard, it opens. If I hit it again, it closes. So I can open and close this animation. So what if we wanted to have this work on a touch device? So going back into Visual Studio, what I'll start to do is I'll just uh, comment out the entire if statement here, a slash and a star, and then a star and a slash to comment out an entire block. And now we will add a for loop to figure out if a touch input has been pressed. So what we'll do is we will write for parentheses, we'll set up an integer, we call this one i, set that equal to zero, comma, so i in this case, lower, then the input dot touch count and 
plus plus to i. And this needs to be a semicolon and not a comma. So within this for loop here, we'll basically set up more or less the same thing as we just had with the input for the in individual keys. But in this case, we'll be looking for the touch phase we will be looking for a touch phase began. So in this for loop here, we actually wanted to do the exact same thing as we actually did up here. So we can copy this up here, but we need to change the input method, copy the entire if statement. So everything that's inside the comments, copy, paste it in here, instead of the input dot key down, we'll say input dot get touch, and we'll be looking for the integer and it's a dot phase, we'll be looking for the phase if this one is equal to touch phase dot began, and the animator state is none, then play the open. So basically, we need to copy this input statement here and paste it into the other two states here. This should now play back the animation for the open and the close when you hit the screen on your device as soon as you've built it to a Android device or a iOS device. So we'll save and that is the basic setup of a on screen press or a key trigger to trigger FBX animation combined with a AR track. So thank you for watching.